So planning for incapacity, this is something that none of us want to think about. Because of accident, illness, or injury, any of us could wind up not having capacity to make our own legal or financial decisions. It could be a stroke, it could be a fall, it could be an ailment such as Alzheimer's, dementia, that gradually takes away our capacity. The problem is, especially in long-term care planning in situations, is if we find ourselves in a situation where we're not able to make our own health care and financial situations, then our assets are really frozen. It's especially tough if we're married and the assets are frozen and our spouse can't really get at or do anything with those assets, such as retirement assets or real estate that requires either the party that's incapacitated to access those assets or it takes both to act, like with real estate, to take out a loan or sell a piece of real estate. It may be necessary to shift assets around, especially to qualify for a long-term care benefit, to pay for assisted living or nursing home care. So in those situations, we want to make sure we act ahead of time before those things happen, to plan ahead, to take care of ourselves and our loved ones during that situation and put ourselves in a situation where we can protect assets that we haven't previously planned to protect and leave ourselves open for a long-term care benefit. The first one I would start with is a general durable power of attorney. That is a document that we want to be comprehensive to appoint a person that we trust 100% to manage our financial and legal affairs, to act in good faith in our best interest if we find ourselves in a situation where we can't act for ourselves. We're also going to act to avoid guardianships, which are court procedures where the court is over our money and property. If we don't want that to happen, then we can appoint the person we want ahead of time in the general durable power of attorney. And that's extremely important. And a lot of future benefits planning and estate planning hinges on having that in place. The second is a healthcare power of attorney. We really want to make sure we appoint the person that can step in as us. We want to be really self-full, maybe even selfish here in saying, who's going to make the best decisions for me? Who's the one person who can make the best decisions if I'm in a situation where I can't make my own healthcare decisions? We want to make sure we include many elements in the healthcare power of attorney, such as being able to handle mental health treatment, um, also disposition of the body, organ donation. There's so many things that are properly handled in the healthcare power of attorney where we appoint the healthcare agent to handle our affairs and our healthcare issues when we are unable to make those decisions. There's so many other, those are the main two, to avoid guardianship and to plan for incapacity. But then when we really think about it, if we haven't put in place a will, which we can't sign, Nobody can sign that for us once we're incapacitated. We want to think and plan ahead to make sure we have the last will and testament in place. If we, if we wanted to set up a trust to avoid probate, if we wanted to protect our homes with a ladybird deed, it's extremely important that we get in while we are competent and that we, we take care of our estate planning so that we can protect ourselves, our assets, and our families. I'm Greg McIntyre with McIntyre Elder Law, and I would offer a free consult to sit down with me and review your estate plan and put in place the right plan for you. You can take advantage of that free consult by calling 1-888-999-6600 or schedule directly online at mcelderlaw.com scheduling. Thank you.